The following video is not endorsed by Dive Heart, Scuba Travel Adventures, Hotel Cozumel, nor Dive Paradise. And welcome to a brand new episode of Lewis's Adventures. I'm Lewis, your host. In this video, once again, I'll be heading to the island of Cozumel in the state of Quintiaru in Mexico. My friends from Dive Heart, a non-profit organization based out of the Chicago suburb of Downers Grove. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell for alerts of when I upload new content to the channel. Especially those with disabilities similar to mine. This video is a follow-up to both episodes 4 and 9 of my adventures with Dive Heart. Originally, this video was going to be about me visiting Citizens Bank Park, the home of the Philadelphia Phillies of Major League Baseball, but has been scrapped. Also, new changes this time on my way to Cozumel, unlike in 2016 and 2017, where I had to fly to Atlanta, Georgia with my mother. This time, instead, we'll be flying to Dallas to connect with our flight to Cozumel instead. When we return here to Philadelphia, we'll be flying to Miami in Florida from Cozumel. This video is dedicated in memory of those who were lost in the Conception dive boat fire on Labor Day. As a diver, I, among with others, were hurt by this tragedy, as well as actor Rob Garrison, whose work in The Karate Kid and Cobra Kai touched my heart. Good morning, everyone. I will soon be leaving for the Philadelphia International Airport as me and my mother will be making our connecting flight to Dallas. And then we will be making our connecting flight to Cozumel from there. Finally made it to Dallas. Soon I will board my flight to Cozumel. And when I land there, I'll let you know, everyone. Stay tuned. Myself and my mother were finally able to land safely in Cozumel, and it felt so good. One of the things I got to do during my trip, as you will see here in a few moments, my 100th dive. Today, I finally get to dive number 100 here in Cozumel, and stay tuned for that as I will bring footage from that dive. Both Danny and Roger were my dive buddies for my checkout dive, which was my 100th dive, as you see here. The things that Danny and Roger and myself did, we got to swim over to the underwater to the pyramid that I had originally seen during my very first night dive back in 2016 when I was diving with Rachel and Tina Marie at the time. And it felt so different to see that same pyramid once again, but this time during the day. And this was the moment of my life as a diver, reaching that 100th dive overall. Well, I finally made it to 100 dives, and now we're, we're embarking on a couple of afternoon dives as I'm back on the boat that I've done my boat dives with in the two previous videos, the Aries. How lucky can I get? Well, the first day of diving is in the books, including reaching my 100th dive. And of course, I just got finished doing a 45 minute drift dive.
I'm now going to show you some of the things that I did learn while also showing you what Jody and Alex learned while they were taking their adaptive buddy training. Well, today is the first day of me auditing the training. And first off, we're going to do the land stuff and then we're going to go into the pool. Hi, Jim, who just photobombed me. I can't wait. As you see here, Alex is working with Dale using Jody to learn how to do transfers. Though not shown, I was able to learn how to do the skill myself. Then afterwards, I go out on a dive with Dennis, auditing them as they're underwater learning how to deal with quadriplegic divers while I was also learning SMB at the same time with Dennis. As you see here, shot by my mother, as I am diving here with Sarah Nichols, and of course, my pal Dennis Poyer. As it was a lot of fun, it was interesting, and I'll never forget this experience at all. I also got to do a wreck dive, which was the C-53 wreck, originally built for the U.S. Navy during World War II. Then it was sold to the Mexicans in 1962, and then it served as a gunboat until 1999 when it was decommissioned and sunk, and it's been there ever since for 20 years. It was an amazing dive. I will never forget that moment. The C-53 Felipe wreck was amazing. Although I didn't get to penetrate it because I'm currently not certified as the wreck diver do so, eventually someday I will come back to this amazing site and penetrate it and bring you some footage from that future dive when I go there in the future. In the meantime, it was a lot of fun to swim outside of this amazing that Cozumel has to offer and of course Ed our dive master he was a very kind gentleman to show us around this amazing wreck as you see here shot by my mother I get ready for the night dive which I ended up do doing and it lasted 62 minutes but unfortunately I was not able to shoot footage from the said dive I only show what was shot by my mother, me preparing for the said dive. As you see here, myself and the others prepare for what would be my new longest dive ever. It was a lot of fun, and I'll never forget this experience of diving in the dark for 62 minutes. And of course, I had my buddy Lauren and others accompany me, such as Glenn Johnson, Roger, and others. It was an amazing experience in Cozumel. We got to see a lot of amazing creatures, including an octopus. Though I wish I did have my camera with me to film what I seen in the dark, it was for the better, as I want to focus on just enjoying the dive and having fun. And now we move on to the interviews. I'm joined here by the father of my good friend and fellow adaptive diver, Nick Johnson, Glenn Johnson. Hi, Glenn. Hi, Louis. I have some questions to ask you. Would sure. you be interested? Yes, absolutely. How did you get involved with and find out about Dive Heart? 
I was at a scuba dive show and I saw their booth. So I thought I'd give it a try. Might be good for my son. What do you like about this trip to Cozumel so far? I like the people and I like when they enjoy new experiences. That's the fun part for me. What inspired you to want to get involved with and become an adaptive buddy or instructor? Well, my son has a disability and I always want to take him diving. And so this is a great opportunity for me to take him diving in a safe environment. Would you ever do another trip like this, whether it's here in Cozumel, in Key Largo, or anywhere else Dive Heart goes to? I love coming down to the Caribbean, so yes, I'll be here again next year. Would you ever start your own Dive Heart team in your neck of the woods or no? No, because in Chicago we already have a lot of Dive Heart teams. Lastly, what advice do you have for those who want to do videos who have disabilities like me on platforms like YouTube, etc.? I think you've enjoyed doing it, do it. There's, it doesn't cost anything, it's a lot of fun. Thank you for your time and your pleasure. Sure. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. I'm joined here by Alex, who's a marine biologist from the Galapagos Islands, and she's also taking the adaptive buddy training, which I've also been auditing, and she's here with me now. Hi, Alex. How Hi. are you doing? I'm good, thanks. I, Glad to be here. I have some questions to ask you. Would Shoot. you be interested? I would love to. How did you get involved with and find out about Dive Heart? Well, um, a good friend of mine, Christina Schleicher, um, was telling me stories about this program that she had participated in for the past few years and I just thought it was incredible, interesting and I, I said, can I come? Can I can I participate? And she said, yeah. So um, she's actually sponsoring me on the trip and uh, so I'm doing the Adaptive Dive Buddy Training Program. What do you like about this trip to Cozumel so far? Oh man, well, I think my favorite part about this trip has been getting to know all of the participants and that being around the energy of everybody has been so inspiring. So the people, in short, it's been the people. What inspire you to want to get involved with and become an adaptive buddy or instructor? Well, I guess I just, um, as a diver, I know how I feel when I scuba dive. I know how stoked I get, how happy it makes me, um, how connected I feel to the ocean when I dive. And I thought, wow, how amazing uh, would it be to extend that, you know, across perceived boundaries um, and share that with, with everybody. Would you ever do another trip like this, whether it's here in Cozumel, in Key Largo, or anywhere else Dive Heart goes to? I'm already planning my next Dive Heart trip, so yes. Would you ever start your own Dive Heart team in, the ne in your neck of the woods or no? Well, that's interesting that you ask because we've been uh, discussing whether or not a dive heart program might work in the Galapagos Islands. So um, I'm definitely going to be doing my homework when I get back home and uh, speaking to some dive operators there and, and see what we might be able to put together. And I would love to be part of uh, developing that in Galapagos. Lastly, what advice do you have for those who want to do videos who have disabilities like me on platforms like YouTube, etc.? Well, really at the end of the day, making videos is about telling stories. Content is the most important thing. So if you have a cool story to tell, people are going to watch. Thank you for your time and everything you said. Thank you. We are joined here by Casey, who I met on the plane from Dallas to Cozumel with my mother, and she's just recently became an advanced diver and she's also a mermaid and I'm going to be talking to her now. Hi Casey. Hi. I have some questions to ask you. Would you be interested in answering them? Of course I would. How did you get involved with and find out about Dive Heart? So I'm friends with uh, Kimmy who's Christina's daughter and Christina met Dive Heart through um, it was through the air shows, I believe, because her husband was the announcer for the air shows that would happen in Cozumel at the same time as the Dive Heart program. And uh, Kimmy and I both live in LA and are friends. What do you like about this trip to Cozumel so far? Um, I love, I mean, the diving's been amazing. The, the, you know, the sea life is so pretty. The corals, like, and the colors of the corals, I've just been really, inspired by that um 
and uh, I've also been really inspired by everyone I've met in the Dive Heart program and I just feel like everyone has been so brave and upfront with with um, their illnesses and, and issues and um, uh, I have invisible illness and I I wish I was braver and would speak about it more and feel more comfortable telling people about you know what's going on so I could you know connect more to other people what inspired you to want to get involved and become an adaptive buddy or instructor I I had not really considered it until this trip um, I just came along as kind of a, a friend and just wanted to you know see what it was all about but I think maybe in the future um, it might be something I'm interested in would you ever do another trip like this whether it's here in Cozumel in Key Largo or anywhere else Dive Heart goes to I would I, I really enjoy it would you ever start your own Dive Heart team in your neck of the woods or no so currently I'm unsure where my neck of the woods is right now I'm in LA but I feel like the ocean there is too cold for me um, and I I personally don't like to dive over there um, but I'm looking for a new place to live so maybe in my new in my new home in the future lastly what advice would you have for those who want to do videos who have disabilities like me on platforms like YouTube etc what advice would I have mm -hmm. I would say um, that it's something to do consistently. Um, if you do it consistently, you'll just get better and better. And I think it's awesome. And um, what other advice would I have? I would say consistency is probably the best advice. And also what you're doing where you're like interviewing people. I think that's really cool. Thank you for your time and your patience. Thank you. I'm joined here by Kenny from Dive Heart Oregon team and he's here with me in Cozumel and I got to dive with him on this trip and here he is. Hi Kenny. How are you doing Louis? I have some questions to ask you. Would oh. you be interested in answering them? Absolutely. How did you get involved with and find out about Dive Heart? I got involved with and found out about Dive Heart um, through Dale who was also on this trip. Um, he came on a trip two years ago and uh, came back to Portland and decided he was going to start a nonprofit um, helping adaptive divers also. What do you like about this trip to Cozumel so far? What I like about this trip so far um, are all the wonderful people I've met and being able to um, dive with adaptive divers. It's something I hadn't done before and it's been awesome. What inspired you to get involved with and become an adaptive buddy or instructor? Uh, what inspired me to become an advanced buddy? Um, I've always had a passion to help others um, and I think that's what makes life great is, is serving others. Would you ever do another trip like this whether it's here in Cozumel, in Key Largo, or anywhere else Dive Heart goes to? I would absolutely go on another trip um, with the Dive Heart team. What does the nonprofit that Dale started, SAFE, stand for, and what do they do with their mission involving Dive Heart? Um, it's SAFE is Scuba Access for Everyone. Um, and we have the same objective of being able to open up um, the underwater world to others um, and yeah to let others experience um, our love for diving regardless of any um, mental impairments or any physical disabilities. Lastly what advice do you have for those who want to do videos who have disabilities like me on platforms like YouTube etc? I would say absolutely go for it, and um, yeah, the sky's the limit. Thank you for your time and patience. I'm joined here by Jody, who I met on this trip, and she, like Kenny, is also from 
Portland, Oregon, and is part of Dale's safe nonprofit organization that is involved with Dive Heart. Hi, Jody. I have some questions to ask you. May I ask you them? Absolutely. How did you get involved with and find out about Dive Heart? I found out through Dale. Um, and truly, originally, I was just going to come on this trip as um, just for fun, just to dive. And then they talked me into actually becoming a part of the program. So I started my pool sessions with Dale at his place. And then um, now I'm here. What do you like about this trip to Cozumel so far? I love uh, just the smiles that come out of the water uh, after each dive and just the opportunities that we can give people to explore the world under the ocean. What inspired you to want to get involved with and become an adaptive buddy or instructor? Dale talked me into it and I had my doubts just because I'm smaller and I was worried that I wouldn't be able to do this, but um, he gave me the confidence to, that I could also help out. Don't worry about question five, since that it only applies to those who don't have a dive heart team in their neck of the woods. So okay. instead, we're going to skip to question six, okay. saying, lastly, what advice do you have for those who want to do videos? who have disabilities like me on platforms like YouTube, etc. Sorry, say that again? Lastly, what advice do you have for those who want to do videos who have disabilities like me on platforms like YouTube, etc.? Ooh, what advice. I already saw the videos that you put together and I think that you are the pro in this and I don't really honestly know anything about <laughs> putting together a video, so. Um, I think you're great and you're doing a good job. Thank you for your time and your patience. Oh, you're welcome. Have a good evening. Thank you. I'm joined here by um, adaptive diver Carly Hook. And hi, Carly. Hello. I like to interview you for my video. I have some questions to ask you. May I please ask? Hi. How did you get involved with and find out about Dive Heart? A friend of mine. What do you like about this trip to Cozumel so far? Um, I like hanging out with everybody on the boat and um, get back to the hotel. What inspired you to want to get involved with and become a scuba diver? Um, I was actually certified when I was a lot younger. Um, when I was still able-bodied. Um, so just being able to do it is pretty awesome. Would you ever do another trip like this, whether it's here in Cozumel, Key Largo, or anywhere else Dive Heart goes to? Definitely. As a diver, how do you feel when diving underwater, and what's your thoughts on the matter? Um, it's really freeing, um, because nobody has to attack me, and I'm just like everybody else in the water. It's really quiet. Lastly, what advice you have for those who want to do videos with disabilities like me on platforms like YouTube. Do it. Get out there and do it. Whatever you can do. Thank you for your time. You're I'm joined here by Tracy and she is a fellow adaptive diver of mine. Hi Tracy. Hi. I'd like to ask you a few questions for my video. Are you okay with this? That sounds great. How did you get involved with and find out about Dive Heart? Well, I used to be a master scuba diver um, a long time ago. And um, three years ago when my illness hit, I thought I would never be able to dive again. And about um, a year and a half ago, about maybe two years ago, I reached out to my former dive group and asked them, is there anybody that can take people that are, I said, handicapped at the time because I didn't know it was adaptive diving. And they said, yes, dive hard. So I looked them up on the internet and contacted them and came to Cozumel. What do you like about this trip to Cozumel so far? 
everything. Um, it's very empowering. Hi. It's very empowering. Um, it's very fun. And I'm super grateful for all of the dive cart people that have helped me out so I can get in the water. What inspire you to want to get involved with and become a scuba diver? Um, a long time, well, I used to be in the Navy. I was in the Navy for 20 years and we used to go to different ports and I uh, started snorkeling, which I call the gateway drug, and started seeing all the cool fish under the water and, and thought, gosh, you know, I'd really like to get in there and get a closer look. So that, that's what got me involved. Would you ever do another trip like this, whether it's here in Cozumel and Key Largo or anywhere else Dive Heart goes to? Yes. As a diver, how do you feel when diving underwater? What's your thoughts on the matter? Um, I feel free, relaxed. I get a feeling of euphoria. Um, I'm able to move around, see cool stuff. So it's a really good feeling all the way around. Lastly, what advice do you have for those who want to do videos who have disabilities like me on platforms like YouTube, etc.? What advice do I have for you? Um, Thank you for your time and your patience. It's my pleasure. Thank you for interviewing me. I'm joined here by Peggy, one of my fellow adaptive divers. Hi, Peggy. I like to interview you for my video. Can I ask you six quick questions? Certainly, Lois. How did you get involved with and find out about Dive Heart? Almost nine years ago, I was injured, and I was part of a spinal cord injury support group down in Broward County in Florida, and Dive Heart came and gave us a presentation. What do you like about this trip to Cozumel so far? Everything. The people, the experience, everything. What inspired you to want to get involved with and become a scuba diver? to know that I could do it. Would you ever do another trip like this, whether it's here in Cozumel, in Key Largo, or anywhere else Dive Heart goes? Absolutely. As a diver, how do you feel when diving underwater? And what's your thoughts on the matter? Uh, it, was, it was one of the coolest experiences I could have done. Lastly, what advice do you have for those who want to do videos who have disabilities like me on platforms like YouTube? get the word out about things like this and many other things so it's a good platform thank you for your time and your patience thank you lewis okay i'm joined here by the president ceo and founder of dive heart himself my old friend jim elliott lewis how are you hi jim it's a pleasure being back here once again in cozumel with you and I have a new batch of questions, may I ask you? Absolutely. How many new adaptive divers, buddies, and instructors have been certified alone in 2019? Well, wow. that's a technical question, and I would have to ask a lot, but I would have to ask my, uh, my training coordinator that. You know, that's why we hire people to do things. It's like, I, I heard an interview with the president of Starbucks, and um, he said, my mother asked me, how do you pay the hundreds of thousands of people in Starbucks? And he said, I don't know. <laughs> so the question is, the, the answer to your question is, um, I don't know. And we've trained thousands of people around the world over the years. So in 2019, exactly, I don't know right now, but I can find that out and get that to you. What is the status of your pool project since I last asked about it and how is well, its project is, going I now? I tell you, that is very, very exciting. We right now are, are about to get a gift of land in the Chicagoland area in Illinois that is going to allow us to go out and reach out to people um, to, to raise funds for our, our pool facility we want to build. Once we have the gift of land, we have probably 36 months to raise millions of dollars. So if you know anyone who has millions of dollars and wants to help support this program, send them our way. We'd be happy to, you know, I don't draw a salary, I donate all my training and come back to Dive Park. So it's not about making money, it's about making the world a better place, revolutionizing rehabilitation. 
What's your thoughts on Dive Heart's first adaptive scuba camp that took place this past summer in Key Largo? Uh, well, it's actually not our first. Uh, we've been doing camps for a long time. So uh, last year's camp, it was great, but we've done it for years and years. Yeah. Ago, so. It's not aware of that. What is in Dive Heart's future pipeline for 2020 that you can share? Um, we, we're, I think in the first quarter, we're going to get the land that's going to allow us to raise money for a facility, which is going to allow us to deep, build pools that are deep enough to replicate what we see in open water. And that's going to help us revolutionize rehabilitation and uh, encourage research from university medical centers around the country to, uh, to do scuba therapy. Can anyone build their own Dive Heart Adaptive Scuba Team as well as how volunteers can get involved and become buddies and instructors? Yeah, all they have to do is go to uh, you know training at diveheart.org. This is my Dive Heart UK shirt, so this is not the right email address, but go to diveheart.org and click on training, uh, get started, and you get a manual, and you do the online training, and then you do the other training, and it's all pretty simple stuff. Lastly, what advice you have for those who want to do videos who have disabilities like me on platforms like YouTube? Uh, repeat that question if you want. Lastly, what advice do you have for those who want to do videos who have disabilities like me? Who want? It's lastly, what advice do you have for those who want to do vi videos who have disabilities like me on platforms like YouTube? Dive Heart does not discriminate when it comes to abilities. So what we do is we encourage people of all abilities to imagine the possibilities in their life. And uh, what you do with this is amazing. Uh, we, we would encourage everyone in the world, regardless of their ability, to do what you do. Because what you're doing is you're spreading love. Because we all need to be loved, valued, and have a purpose. And that's what you do, Rose. You spread that. Thank you. Vision and mission. So thank you for that. Thank you for your time, Jim, and your patience. And this wonderful trip. Wow, I can't believe I did this once again. This video of mine, like the others, I put hard work into showing that people like me can make a difference. Whether it's travel, scuba diving, or even playing Pokemon Go and Harry Potter Wizards Unite and so much more. This is Lewis signing off from Hotel Cozumel in Cozumel, Quintilla Roo in Mexico. I hope you enjoyed this latest scuba diving adventure of mine. Thanks for watching everyone. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And remember, it's time for adventure.